In part three of this video series on the Brielle Replica One computer, I'll discuss some of the available software. If you've not already done so, you should watch parts one and two of this series for a general introduction to the Brielle Replica One computer and some of the hardware add-on boards for it. In part two of this series, in the discussion of the Brielle Multi-IO card, I mentioned the optional SpeakJet speech generator chip. Since I made the video, I ordered a SpeakJet chip from SparkFun and installed it on the card. The chip can produce speech and other sounds by combining a number of predefined phonemes. Commands are sent to it over a serial interface. Here's the example basic program that Vince Brielle supplied in the Multi-IO board manual. When run, it says, Hello, can we play a game? Replica 1. Hello, shall we play a game? Wow. Replica 1. Here's another demo I wrote that plays random phonemes, including sound effects. And this one says hello at different speeds and pitches. I've not had much time to play with the chip yet, but it looks like a lot of fun. I may also try using it with an Arduino board. In part two of this video series, I discuss the Apple cassette interface, but not how to load and save programs. Let's briefly look at that now. The onboard firmware is only 256 bytes of code and runs standalone. It started by running address C100, which you can do from Wasmon. It echoes an asterisk and then waits for a command. The commands are in the format hex start address, a dot, an end address, followed by R or W, and then return. The R command will read the range of addresses from tape, and W will write. It displays a slash when the read or write is completed and then jumps back to the WAS monitor. Here's an example of a write operation with the output going to an amplified speaker so you can hear it. In this case, we write 4K of data from address 1000 through 2000. The data is written at about 1500 bits per second with a 10 second header at the start to skip over any tape leader and synchronize reading. This means an 8 kilobyte program, for example, takes a little less than a minute to save or load. In the previous video, I mentioned that the Apple II has almost the same tape interface hardware built in. The Apple I and Apple II used the same data format, except that the Apple II made a small improvement by storing a checksum byte at the end of the recording. Some Apple I software on the internet can be found in the form of sound files that you can load using the cassette interface connected to a computer or music player. To make it easier to develop software for the Brielle Replica One computer, and as a fun and challenging software project, I wrote an extensive 6502 machine language monitor program I called JMON. I eventually implemented just about every feature I could think of. It was later ported to the 6502 based Kim1 and Brielle Superboard 3 computers, as well as a simpler version for the Brielle Altair 8800 computer that's written in Intel 8080 assembly language. It can run out of RAM or ROM and is about 8K in size. It supports memory manipulation commands to copy, dump, fill, search, verify, calculate checksums, or write specific hex data or characters to memory. You can specify the value for the delay after all writes to accommodate slow EE prompts. It has the ability to call the Apple Cassette Interface Firmware, CFFA1 card menu, WASMON, or BASIC. 
You can display CPU registers, start execution at an address, or single step an instruction at a time in RAM or ROM, showing the state of all the CPU registers. It has support for up to four breakpoints in RAM. You can add or subtract two hex numbers or display a hex number in decimal. It can display information about the system, including the CPU type, amount of RAM, vectors, and the presence of ACI, CFFA1, and multi-IO cards. You can also set a number of program options, such as whether to display lowercase characters. You can disassemble memory with optional support for the 65CO2 and 65816 instructions, and it has a mini assembler which can assemble lines of 6502 or 65CO2 code. The Apple II contained a more sophisticated built-in monitor program than the Apple I. Like Wasmon, it was written by Steve Wozniak. Winston Gaylor, with additional adaptations by Wendell Sander, ported the Apple II monitor to the Apple I. I adapted the original Apple II monitor source code that was published in the Apple II Technical Reference Manual, commonly known as the Red Book, to build under the CA65 cross-assembler, then applied the patches for the Apple I. You can get these files from my GitHub account. Here it is running. I'll demonstrate a few commands. Displaying memory. Dumping a range of memory. Uh, doing hex math. And disassembling. Incidentally, on my GitHub account, I have versions of a couple of other things that Woz wrote for the Apple II that I ported to the Apple I. The August 1976 issue of Dr. Dobbs' journal has code for floating point math routines written in 6502 assembler. I combine that with code for converting between ASCII and floating point format that were written by Marvin L. DeJong and published in Compute Magazine in February and April of 1981. Woz is also known for writing the Sweet 16 virtual machine interpreter that he used for the integer basic ROM in the Apple II series of computers. I built the code for the Apple I and have some demos on my GitHub account. CC65 is a set of free development tools for 6502 based systems including an assembler and C compiler. It supports a number of platforms including the Apple II, Commodore 64 and similar machines, Atari and Nintendo NES. It runs on Linux and Windows. There have been various patches posted to support Apple I and Replica I systems. I took some older patches for version 2.12 written by Jeremy Rand and got them working with version 2.13.3. You can find the code at my GitHub account. Also, there is a program I wrote called bin to mon that converts the binary output of CC65 to the WAS monitor format so that it can be downloaded from the serial port. As well as a powerful assembler, CC65 allows you to write C programs and run them on the Replica 1 or an Apple 1 with enough memory. I've ported and written a number of C programs. I'll demonstrate a few of them later in the video. In the past, there was reluctance to accept the Apple I Replica I patches back to the CC65 project due to the small number of systems out there, but CC65 recently changed to a new maintainer, so that may now be possible. I hope to update the patches to work with the latest version of CC65 in Git. Besides the Apple I basic, the chips in the EEPROM of the Replica I, there are some other alternative basics that could run on the system. Tiny Basic is a dialect of the basic programming language written by Tom Pittman, which was sold for $5 a copy. Developed primarily for the Kim 1, it's easily ported to other 6502 based computers. It's only about 2.3 kilobytes in size. 
It's a little more primitive than more common and larger variants of BASIC, lacking even four next loops. It's also quite slow because it's interpreted using an interpreted language. So it's an interpreter written in an interpreter written in machine language. Tiny Basic spawned a newsletter called Dr. Dobbs' Journal of Tiny Basic Calisthenics and Orthodontia, which evolved into the Dr. Dobbs' Journal, which was published until the year 2014. Bill O'Neill disassembled a 6502 version of Tiny Basic, added comments, and got it working with generic 6502 systems using a serial ACIA for input and output. I took his source code and adapted it to the CC65 cross-assembler and ported the input-output routines to run on the Replica 1 and to run out of RAM at suitable addresses. Here's a demo of Tiny Basic running. This is a math flashcard program that's a little over a few hundred lines of code. Enhanced BASIC is a BASIC interpreter for the 6502 and compatible microprocessors written from scratch by Lee Davison. It's designed to be easy to port to different systems and is free for non-commercial use. It supports floating point math and offers more features than AppleSoft BASIC, requiring 10K of ROM or RAM for the interpreter code and 1K of RAM. I ported it to the Replica 1 and made the patches available on my GitHub account. On Michael Stiles' blog site is source code derived from disassembling a number of early Microsoft basics and then creating common source code that can generate exact binaries for eight classic versions of basic, including those for Commodore, Ohio Scientific, AppleSoft for Apple II computers, and Kim Basic. That article also has a lot of history and information on the subtle bugs and differences between different versions of basic. I made some patches so I can run it on a replica one. I chose to use Ohio Scientific BASIC since it has the fewest external dependencies. It also happens to be the BASIC I used on my first computer. Because it's Microsoft BASIC, it's more compatible with the other Microsoft written BASICs for microcomputers of that era, making it easier to port games from books and magazines, for example. AppleSoft Lite is a port of AppleSoft BASIC for the Apple II for the Replica 1 by Tom Cowgod Green. Apple II specific features like graphics were removed and some Apple I Replica 1 specific features were added. As well as support for floating point math, some of the commands included that were not present in Apple I BASIC are data read and restore, on air resume, run stop continue, get, square root log exponential functions, and ASCII and character dollar functions. For some reason it admits the sine, cos, tan, trigonometric functions. These were optional in many versions of Microsoft BASIC because they took up a lot of space. If you have the CFFA1 compact flash card for the Replica 1, it supports loading and saving of programs. It can be burned into an EEPROM and installed into the Replica 1 to replace the shipped EEPROM or loaded into RAM. It's just under 8K in size. It's also included in firmware as an alternate version of BASIC on the Replica 1 10th edition. There are a number of BASIC games for the Apple 1 and Replica 1. Some came on the CD that comes with the Replica 1. And you can port games from various sources like these books. I wrote a couple of games as an experiment to try the port of the CC65 C compiler. One was Yum, which I showed in part one of this series. I also wrote a text adventure game written in the spirit of similar games from the 1970s and 80s, which I call Abandoned Farmhouse Adventure. Here is some of that game being played.
The game is in plain C and can compile natively on just about any system that has a C compiler. For fun, I also made a version for Android devices and released it to the Google Play Store. In part two, I mentioned the Ultimate Apple One software collection that's available as an image for the CFFA1 flashcard. That's a good resource for Apple One programs. On my GitHub account, I've also written some quick reference documents for the Replica One and 6502 and related microprocessors that you may find useful. I hope you enjoyed this video and the others in the series. I've now covered the basics of the Replica One as well as the details of the hardware and software available for it. If you have questions or comments about this video or the Replica One, feel free to post comments on YouTube, the Brielle forums, or contact me by email. I also encourage you to check out my other videos on vintage computers, radio, and electronics.